Welcome back to the second video and uh, I brought in my absolute favorite car since I didn't see a specific car down in the video description but this can change and that is exactly what I plan to do for this video so what I want to do is first remind you uh, to keep everything organized and the second thing is to write a script in such a way that we can just later on replace this car model with maybe a truck or I don't know a van so that's exactly what we're going to do today what I'm going to do is actually I want to try and build this whole entire game in video so I don't want to do anything off camera so the very first thing that I would like to do is to give this car a managing script so what that will do is just hold every component that this car will have so, we'll, so I'm going to start by creating a brand new folder, call it core scripts maybe. Inside the core, we will have a script called core manager. So what this will have is basically all the references that we're going to need to build this whole entire game. So, so before we go any further, what we need to do is to create a prefab of this Lada car. So what you can do is just drag this, drop it in here, and then drag this game object and drop it into the course. So now we have a prefab, we can delete it, and we can just bring it over here. So for now, I'll just keep it unpacked so I can work easier. I'll delete the prefab and I'll work from there. So the very first thing that I want to create into this car is some sort of moving script. So before we even write anything into the car manager, I'll go ahead and create another script and I'll call it car engine maybe. So this car engine will drive the car obviously. So inside the car engine, what I wanna do is before we write any code, I'll just drag this and drop it in here. Or what we can do is remove this and in here, what we can do is say header and components. So the very first component will be the car engine. You can define it as a car engine. And then in the start, we can do transform add, or actually game object add component car engine. And before we do that, we are going to say car engine is equal to this. So now we are referencing this to this, and then we are just instantiating this into a new component. This is one way of doing it. I'm not going to do it this way. I'm just going to save this, and then I'll, I'll leave this blank. So I'll save this, and I'll go into the car engine. Inside the car engine, we first need some references. Or actually, I should say some values. So the very first value that I want to give is the power of the vehicle, obviously. So public load power. These, by the way, will all change as the game progresses. So I can't just have power in here. I should have some more values, maybe some torque curves or I don't know, whatever. So start. We're not going to use start just yet, but we are going to use fixed update. So now that we have a fixed update, the way that we are going to move our car is by using the wheel colliders, obviously. So wheel collider, I'll make this public wheel collider. And instead of just wheel collider, I'll make it into a list wheel collider. There we go. And I'll just call it wheels, maybe. So in the start, I want to do some checks before we can run the car. We don't want issues. So... I'll do here a boolean. So what this boolean does, maybe you know it, it just returns a true or false. So can, can run maybe. I'm just making these names as I go. So can run will return false for now, but we actually need some sort of a filter. So if wheels, or well, we can't say that, we need to say wheels is not equal to null. Okay, if wheels is not equal to null, then you can return true. Actually, that's a very terrible thing to do. The better way of doing this is just saying boolean flag 
flagged one maybe is equal to false. And then in here, we just return the flag one. There we go. In case we do have the wheels, we're just going to say flag one is equal to true. There we go. And this is working now. So into the start, we don't want to do anything. We just want to say in the fixed update, actually, we just want to say if can run. Or actually, I should say if can't run, return. So if you're not familiar with this line, well, that's basically the same as saying if can run does not return a false value. There we go. Or no, actually, if can run is false. There we go. This is the same as saying this. So it's just a shorter way of using the if statement. Okay, so now that we have the wheels, it doesn't matter how many wheels we have right now. We can define that later in here. Actually, let's, let's do it now. Let's say system.serializable and public enum card type maybe. First type will be four wheel maybe. Three wheel. And the last thing will be six wheel. Again, I'm just making this up. I will probably change all of these in the future. I'm just making them to make a point that you can use the enumerator. So the way you declare a enumerator is just as you declare a variable. So public card type, card type. There we go. Now we have a reference of the card type. We won't be using a card type right now because it's just the beginning. And there we go. Now we have the wheels. What's left for us to do here is to just use the wheels. So obviously we need some sort of an input. And uh, if you've imported the essentials, you should have the engine right here with input constants and input handler. So in here, we need the input handler. And we're just going to drop in the input handler. There we go. Now the input handler is giving us the values. So what we're after is this vertical. I don't know why I put this can move in here. I'll just remove this. And there is a inline if statement. So I'll just delete that as well. Like this. And this will always receive the input. We should cap the input actually, but not in here. We're going to cap it in here. So we're going to do that later actually. So if or actually no we need a reference of the input handler so right on the top just say input handler input let's just call it input for now this is not a very good way of declaring variable right now the i is not capital this i should be capital but uh, this was written like two years ago so it's okay for now we have an input in the start we need to import the input, but instead of just doing input, actually input not int is equal to get component. What we're going to do is use the core manager. That's it. That is the point of using this managing script. So right at the top, what I'm going to do is just declare a core manager, core manager. There we go. So now that we have a core manager, what we can do, core manager is equal to get component, core manager. And there we go. Now we have a component of core manager. So the reason why we can just say core get component is because this script, this script, and this script will sit into the same game object. So now, if we need the input, we can just get it from here. And uh, we can't get it right now because we don't have a reference. So let's say public input handler input there we go now we have an input let's save that and right where we need the input let's create actually a new method let's call it move vehicle we don't have a move vehicle let's create void move vehicle there we go and now we just want to cycle through the wheels the easiest way of doing that is obviously using a for each. We have a for each right here. And here it asks the items that we want to cycle through. So obviously wheels. And now this item holds the actual item in the wheels. 
just the one thing that we want to tell for right now is to just move forward. So if, or actually we don't need it, if we just want to take, so we just want to say item dot, I think it was called torque. Yeah, motor torque is equal to input dot vertical. There we go. This is a horrible way of using this line right here. We're going to change this as well. But this is going to work for now. So I don't know if you've noticed, but we don't have a input right now. We just have a empty reference. And uh, that's why we made the whole car manager. So right after the car manager, what I want to do is to say input is equal to car manager dot input. That's the easiest way of doing that. So now we can keep track of all of our components easy enough. We're not going to do the steering right now. We just want to do this and uh, let's try it out. We've been writing too much code. Okay, so we're back into the Unity interface and this is what we've built so far. We obviously forgot to use the core engine. So let's just drag in our core engine right here. And there we go. Now we just need to drop this in here and this in here. So now we have the references right here. I hope you can see it. The power should be 100 for now. Let's add in these wheels. So you might have noticed we don't have the wheels. Let's go ahead and add in the wheels. This is going to be a very painful progress. I should say process. Well, let's just add in the wheel collider. I cannot see the wheel collider. Whatever reason, this wheel collider is not working. I cannot see the selection wire. I don't know what's happening. I forgot to put in the rigid body. So rigid body goes in here. And there we go. Now we have the wheels, which are all messed up. Okay, we'll fix that in just a second. I see the problem. The problem is the scale. And to fix that, create a new game object, call it core. Make sure to put this into zero. Make sure to put this inside zero as well. And just take all the components, put them inside here. And there we go. Now we have this, which we don't need. And we have this, which we do need. Okay. Let's grab all the components. Put them in here. There we go. We can delete this for now. We don't need it. Everything looks good except for the wheels okay now we have the scale on one we can bring in our rigid body and the wheels will be messed up the reason why is because we still have a scale of 100 right here and to fix that we can just say one because the wheel will be at one as well so what we're going to do is actually a little bit painful we are going to create some empty game objects We have a game object in here, and if we drag it outside, this game object becomes 100. So, we just make it back to 1, drag this inside, and there we go. Now we have a functional wheel that turns perfectly fine. And now all that's left for us to do is to just drag this outside and make this to 1 as well. Actually, no, that's the wrong one. Okay. Here is our wheel. The wheel is into a different game object from the actual wheel mesh. And that is exactly how it should be. So this is a temporary fix. We should fix it the actual way that it's supposed to be fixed. And we're going to do that right now. We don't want anything to do with this mess right here. So I'll go back to where I was, where the wheels were big like this there we go wheels are 100 times big and what i'll do go into each wheel and just delete the mesh the wheel itself okay so now create an empty make sure this is on zero and just name these wheel colliders so inside the wheel colliders We'll create four game objects. 
this will be front this will be rear there we go this will be rear as well front ones and the rear ones so add in the wheel collider on all these and the wheel collider should be on zero that's very good drag in the front ones where the front should be right here and just now space them apart like this There we go. So if this is on 0.7, what we can do is make the other one negative. And now we should have evenly spaced. There we go. We should we're gonna do that same process for the rear ones. There we go. Make sure this is on the center. Do the same process. This is the left one right one is the negative and there we go now one thing to note is that the car should have the blue pointer in the front of the car so right now it's not the front what we can do swap the chassis or actually the wheels as well there we go this should be working fine right now we have the wheels which are displaced okay now let's go back into the car get this into zero and let's finally hit play so i hope you're seeing what's going on if you can't see anything i don't think you can problem is we have no mass in here so let's add in a thousand kilograms and one other problem that we have is that we don't have a collision body. Let's add in a collision body. Create a 3D cube right there. And now if I hit play, okay, we have some movement. I don't know what the car is doing, but I think I have an idea. Okay, let's now drag this down a little bit. Let's fix the radius like this. And let's fix the suspension distance. This looks quite perfect to me. Let's now try and drive it. It is driving, but it's driving very, very slow. Let's give it some more power, actually. Okay, the car is not moving so if you've been following along this is actually too long if you've been following along uh, I'm actually pressing the W key and this is not going forward actually it is but it's going very very slowly even though I have the power set to 1000 so the problem is that we just declared the power and never used it so that's what that's what we're going to do right now a very simple fix power times this power should be lowercase there we go and what i'll do is i'll drag the camera and put it inside the vehicle and now let's try and drive the vehicle there we go we have a driving vehicle if you're wondering why the wheels are not spinning we are going to be fixing that very shortly but this is our progress so far. We have a moving vehicle that is responding to our input. 